So right now I'm looking for a species of mosquito known as Anopheles sinensis that's native to China. Uh, right now we're in Guangzhou Ch province and these mosquitoes specifically like habitats in rice fields. The reason we're looking for these mosquitoes is because they transmit malaria and they're increasingly becoming resistant to pyrethroid insecticides which are used for agricultural purposes. We would like to develop a new class of compounds in collaboration with China and UCI to develop a class of compounds known as synergist molecules that actually inhibit the degradation of the insecticide in the mosquito body. We also want to develop a bacterial strain of toxin known as BTI. And this is important because BTI is non-toxic to humans, but very toxic to the larvae. So if we kill off the larval populations, they can't grow into adults and transmit malaria to humans. Now we, we want to test our long-lasting biological larvicide and uh, to kill all the mos mosquitoes here. Hmm. That's a typical habitat for the Aedes albicans larvae. Now, it's very suitable for the growing and development of the albicans. So control the mosquito there is uh, very necessary to prevention and control the mosquito bone diseases. In China, total number of malaria cases uh, has been going down rapidly in the past decade. Chinese government uh, is setting up objective to limit malaria by 2020. To achieve these objectives, we need new technologies. So this project funded as a part of International Center of Malaria Research uh, by the National Institute of Health is to develop new technologies to assist the government to eliminate malaria. We are conducting a malaria surveillance uh, both at hospitals and at the community to determine uh, the most uh, susceptible population and the most risk population in the areas. So this is 24 hours after we touched the mosquitoes? Yes. And now we're just going to count how many died yes. out of each cup at each concentration. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a varying concentration mm -hmm. and we want to find out how many kills 50% of the mosquitoes. So what we're going to do is look at the control and you can see that there's mosquitoes flying around in the lower concentrations, but at the higher concentrations, the mosquitoes are all at the bottom and they're all dead. Yes. I mean, of course, this data doesn't look good, right? Yeah. I think we put them on ice too long. 100 years ago, that side of Type Corridor, this is a village. But with the economy development, the village has developed too much. So in this village, there are too many public health problems. There are too many the mosquito breeding sites, which can cause the mosquito bone disease epidemic. For example, the dengue fever, and malaria. So with problems in our hand, we cooperated with the University of California, supported by the NG funding to study the impact of the urbanization on the transmission of dengue fever. The, this uh, case is, uh, seems very complicated under some uh, clinical signs and symptoms. The skin rash looks like some the disease like the dengue fever and other infected diseases. So in your experiments, the key objective is to determine how the urban environment affects mosquito survivorship. So uh, for, for the larvae, I think you should, yeah, you, you, first thing you should uh, uh, add in the difference between the city and the rural area. And second thing, you should think about what difference in the habitats. Of course, there are temperature difference. 
between the city center and suburb. This is dopamethrin. This is the insecticide that they put on bed nets in Africa to prevent malaria transmission. But this is about 10 milligrams, which is 0 0.01 grams. And I'm gonna dilute this down about a million fold to kill a mosquito. We're actually gonna apply 100 nanoliters to each mosquito. So I'm just gonna do a 100 fold dilution to get to 10 nanograms per mosquito, and I'm gonna do a, another 100 fold dilution to get to 100 picograms per mosquito. Yeah, make sure the needle tip is in the water mm -hmm. or the liquid. There you go. Now I'll fill it. Cool. Yeah, just hold it down. You need a different. No, these are anatomy, anatomy. Wow. I'm gonna grab the legs of this oh. So if you have better forceps for that, uh, these will probably work though. So I could envision people using BTI probably within the next five to ten years. This could be a, a real strategy to mitigate malaria transmission. But early tests indicate that it works well, and in the laboratory we've shown that it lasts up to six months. I think the essential thing for us to do is to monitor this problem. First, we have to determine which insecticides the mosquitoes are resistant to. And second, I think uh, we need to find out which level is the problem right now. Well, I think ecological um, method is, will be the best, like preventing the, the insect from growing. Yeah, I think right. so. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And we could also develop new classes of compounds that specifically target the resistance mechanism, like the synergists. One of the really interesting parts to me as a chemist is developing these synergist compounds because it, it eliminates the need to design a new insecticides. So to develop this new class of compounds for mosquito control is a completely new area that no one has explored yet. Knowing the life table of the mosquito, like you can know the, the seasonal mm -hmm. growth of the, the, the mosquito, mm -hmm. and also you can know the population, the damage it might cause to the population. Exactly. So I think attacking the ecological uh, method would be the best way. I think so. I think that that is an important strategy, like studying and understanding why the mosquitoes are resistant in the first place, mm -hmm. and then uh, using that knowledge to develop new classes of compounds that can be used against the mosquito. I think they're all going to be effective ways to uh, mitigate resistance, but they can all be used in combination with one another. We don't have to just use one strategy to stop resistance. We need to target all of these mechanisms so that we can really start to make a dent in uh, the resistance in the mosquito. To me, it's really exciting work because we'll be pioneering and exploring a new area scientifically, but it also has real world applications that can actually help people all over the world, in Africa, in China, and with not just malaria, but other mosquito-borne diseases like dengue fever and West Nile virus.